Hello folks, Eric here from Avid CNC, and I'm excited to show you our new touch plate utility on our new Avid CNC EX controllers. Our new controller fully supports the touch plate just as it did in the old controller and adds some really cool extra features like laser crosshair support and even native stylus touch probe support. You can even probe multiple fixtures on your work surface and save their locations for reference later. This is the biggest update to the touch plate utility in years, and I'm really excited to show you. So let's jump in and see how it all works. To start learning the new touch plate utility, we're going to do an easy probe, which is to hang the probe off of the corner of a piece of material, just like you see here. To get into the touch plate utility, you're going to click on Set Part Zeros from the main control screen. From there, you'll click on Plate. So here I'm clicking the inside and outside buttons to change whether I'm probing from the inside or the outside of the material. Then I can click on corner to choose which corner I'm going to probe from. You'll want to set this graphic up in the same way that you're going to be probing your material. Once you've chosen your corner, there's a couple other settings to look at. Your bit diameter should be set automatically from doing a tool touch off. And you're going to want to set the Z clearance amount. That is the amount that the Z is going to rise after we're done probing. If you have a magnet, you can be reminded to put that on. You can also be reminded to turn your flutes. You can probe Z while you're setting X and Y, but for this demonstration, I'm going to skip that and we'll come back to that later. Before you start any probe, it's a good idea to tap your touch plate to your tool and make sure that it registers in the touch plate utility, which you can see with this graphic here. If you're happy with all of your settings, go ahead and press cycle start, which is the green box near the bottom right hand corner of the screen. The first instruction is going to be to jog the tool to the center of the plate and press cycle start. You want to get pretty close to the center of the plate, but you don't need to be touching it. You want to end up being just a little bit above it. When you're satisfied with where you are, press cycle start and the probing cycle will commence. You see, we'll begin by touching off Z and that's just to get a height above the plate so that it can then move along X and Y uh, to get an accurate probe. You can see here it's reminding us to turn the flutes. And because we're doing a lower left hand corner, it's actually going to move right and up or in X positive and Y positive to hit the edge of the plate. This is designed this way so that it keeps the touch plate firmly on your material and doesn't push it off the side. After the bit finishes touching off in X and Y, the bit will rise up to that Z clearance amount and move over to X, Y, zero, which you can see here in the DRO. And if we look, we can see our bit is perfectly set on the corner of this material. Each XY location is stored in the WCS CSR table, which you can access from the Set Part Zeros menu. If you look at the table, you can see our G54 offset for X and Y is 5.7 and 5.3 for Y. This means that we are offset from the home location of the machine these amounts. Now with most of the plate probing routines, you can probe Z while you probe X and Y, but here we're going to do Z separately. And to do that, I'm going to click on the Z only probe method here. I'll place my touch plate on top of the material and make sure my bit is over top of it. Then I am going to press cycle start and start that probing routine. And because we're only doing Z, the bit is going to come down straight down over the plate and do a double tap to measure the surface of the material. Now that we're done with that Z probe, I'm going to click on WCS CSR table again, and let's take a look at the Z height. It's 0.789, and that means that the top of this material is 0.789 inches above your work surface. The thicker your material gets, the larger this Z number will be, the thinner it is, the smaller the number will be. Now watch what happens when I put the bit on top of the material. The Z DRO reads zero, which is what you'd expect because we Z zeroed to the top of our material. So now we know whenever we Z the top of our material, our Z offset will be the thickness of that material, or to say another way, the height of that material above your work surface. Another probing method you can do is the side probe. This lets you probe a single axis at a time. Here, I'm going to probe from the back of this red board uh, in Y negative. So you can see I set the graphic accordingly, made sure my bit diameter and my clearance amount is correct. Everything looks good, and with my bit over the touch plate, I'll press cycle start and we'll probe in. 
As you see here, it's going to touch in Y a couple times to get an accurate reading. Then it will lift up and it's going to move over to Y negative. And you'll see the DRO is now going to read Y zero. Another probing method you can do is inside corner probing. And to get to that, you press the inside button and then select the corner that matches the type of probe that you want to do. In this case, I've got an L-shaped jig that I'm going to probe to, so I'm going to put my probe in the bottom left-hand corner of that jig. With my probing setting set up the way that I like, I'm going to go ahead and press cycle start and watch the probing operation happen. Now you'll notice that this is probing down and to the left, so it's pressing the touch plate into the corner, which is what you want. This is a little bit different than that corner probing we did earlier where it pulled the plate back onto the material. That's why it's important to pick inside or outside in the correct corner every time you do a probe. Next, I'm going to teach you how to do angle probing. So here I've got this fixture that I've used previously and I'm putting back on the machine to use again. And one of the challenges with doing this is getting a jig like this back on perfectly parallel to the axis of the machine. Well now, with this new probing routine, you don't really have to worry about that. You can put a fixture like this in any orientation that you want in any location on the table. And when you're done probing it, your G-code will be rotated so it follows that fixture exactly, just like you see here. If you watch closely in the DRO, we're only making X and Y moves, straight moves. There's no angle applied in the cam toolpath at all. This may look like sorcery, but it's actually really easy to set up, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. You're going to go back into Part Zeros, just as you've been doing, and select Plate, and then select Set CSR Angle. This is going to show you an example of how to get an angle. You just take the touch plate and you probe two points on one side of a straight part, and it will calculate an angle for you. You can click Orient to pick which side you want to approach from. In this case, I want to approach from the bottom up, so I'm going to use this orientation. With that selected, I'll press Cycle Start, and I'm going to place my touch plate in the first location right up tight against my fixture. I'll jog down in place, and then press Cycle Start. And you see what's going to happen is it will come down in Z, it will do a quick touch off on the plate, and then move up to find the first point of that angle. Back in the control software, you'll see that it's now asking me for position number two. I'll move my touch plate over, just like it shows in the diagram, jog my bit over the top of the plate, and press cycle start. And you'll see it's going to do the same thing. It's going to move down for a Z touch, then it will move up and touch the second point along the edge of this fixture. So after that second point is hit, you'll see the measured CSR angle is now 12.9469 and you'll see an angle icon applied to your DRO. We can go to the WCS CSR table and see that that angle was now applied to this current work offset that we're on. Now that we've probed the angle, we can go ahead and find the corner of this jig. So here I'm going to do an outside corner, find the bottom left hand corner. I'll go ahead and place the touch plate on the corner of the fixture and press cycle start to do that corner probing routine. What's important to note is that when you're probing an angle and then finding a corner, it's important to do the angle first and then the corner second. So now if we go and look at our work offsets table, you'll see we have an X, Y, and Z offset for this fixture and an angle. So now our work coordinate system is rotated perfectly to match the angle of this fixture and the X, Y is offset to the bottom left hand corner. Again, this can be a great feature for making jigs, setting them aside, and then putting them back on your table and reusing them later. We've been talking a lot about work offsets in this demo, and what's a really important feature of this new touch plate utility is that you can have multiple work offsets. So imagine you have a table like this and you've got several pieces and fixtures set up. You can XY0 to just about as many of them as you want, and call them up as you work across your table. To show this in action, I'm gonna to zero to each one of these fixtures and pieces of material and show you how we can save them as offsets. In our offsets table, which is under the set part zeros, you'll see that work coordinate system one, two, and three, or G54, 55, and 56, are all zeroed out. You can also see at the very top of the screen, it says I'm on work coordinate system two. I intend on setting work coordinate system 1 for this first jig, so I'm going to highlight it here and then in the bottom select 
set as active WCS. That will make work coordinate system one my active WCS, which you'll see at the top of the screen. Now I'm gonna run an inside corner probe. After it's done, I'll head back over to the WCS CSR table and you'll see now that I've got an X and Y offset under work coordinate system one. This is exactly what I want. I'll double click on the nickname and I'm gonna give this a name. We'll call it LJIG. That way I remember what it is. Now I wanna set up my next fixture on WCS2. So I'll go back into the WCS CSR table, select two and then click set as active work coordinate system. And now at the top of the screen, you see I'm on WCS2. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nickname of red board and let's go probe out where that red board is. I'll press save and then set up a probing routine, place my touch plate on that board and probe the corner. After the probing is done, I'm gonna head back into the work coordinate system table and you'll see I've got a different X, Y, and Z offset for this saved in there. So great, that red board is all set up. I'll go to three, set that one as my active work coordinate system. And you can see that at the top, both in this menu and when you're back on the main screen. And I'm gonna give this a name, we'll call it vacuum jig. I'm gonna go ahead and do the angle probe like we just did and a corner probe. So I'm setting both my angle and my X, Y coordinates. And you'll see here in work coordinate system three, X, Y, Z, and my angle have all been stored as a preset. Now that that's done, let's call up a preset that we made before. So I'll select number one and say set as active WCS. And then I'll just click save and get out of this menu and you'll see at the top of the screen, WCS1 is selected. So if I hit our go to XYZ0 button and then hit cycle start, you'll see that the tool will go directly back to where we zeroed out this jig. And to confirm, you can see X and Y are at zero in our DRO. Now I'm gonna go back into that CSR table and I'm gonna set WCS2 as my active work coordinate system. After doing that, I'll go ahead and hit the go to XYZ zero button and this is gonna bring us right back to that red board, both in X, Y, and Z. And it's bringing us to Z as well because I opted to do a Z touch during that probe. And if you've been following along, I bet you know what's gonna happen next. I'll go ahead and hit work coordinate system three, click set as active work coordinate system, and then save and get out of this menu. And when I go back to XYZ zero, not only are we gonna to get to the appropriate X and Y and Z location, that angle is also gonna be applied as you can see in the DRO on the very top left. And just to show you that it comes back, we're gonna follow that along again. And that angle is brought back perfectly just as we probed it. Now, sometimes you don't wanna use a touch plate. You just wanna say, hey, my tool is right here. And you can do that in set part zeros under the manual option, which is one of the first things that comes up. And to use it, you simply select the axis that you want and then go ahead and press set. And whatever value is in that box will be set to your DRO. Here you can see I set X and Y to zero very easily. And I'm also doing the same on Z. If you wanna say that you're somewhere other than zero, you can just fill in whatever numbers you like in these boxes. And once you fill in a number, just go ahead and hit set and it will say part zero accepted. You can see my DRO here says six, we'll set 12 for Y, and that gets put directly in your DRO. It's that easy. There is another feature in this menu worth noting and that is the approach angle. So sometimes you may do this, set a part zero by putting your bit up against the piece of material. Now in this case, you could just say you're at negative 0.125 because we're using a quarter inch bit, or you can change the approach angle here. So you can see I'm clicking right and left and it's showing a diagram of a bit up against a piece of material. And if you put the edge finder diameter as your bit size correctly, when you move that bit up there and you press set in the manual menu, it will do the math for your bit diameter for you. So you can see here it set my X at negative 0.1250, which is what I'd want. Another great feature built into this utility is the ability to set X and Y locations using a laser crosshair. You can use any kind of a laser crosshair or dot that you want. You just need to mount it to a fixed location on your spindle. In the set part zeros menu, there is a laser tab, and that will help you teach the offset between your spindle and the laser in just two easy steps. Once you have that set up, 
all you have to do in the laser tab is just move your crosshair over where you want to laser. And once you have it in position, you'll just press set. And you'll see here, when I press set, it's actually setting my location to the offset of the laser. So that way, when I move my spindle back to X, Y, zero, it's going to move the spindle right over where that laser crosshair just was. Our new Centroid EX controller supports stylus probes. Probes are great for finding the accurate location of parts. They can be used for all kinds of unique probing routines like a bore probe, finding edges, angles of parts, and just things that you can't always do with a touch plate. You'll find all the probing routines in the Set Part Zeros menu under Probe. And you'll see here there's several different cycles, bore, boss, slot, web, inside corner, outside corner, etc. We'll do a bore probe here just to give you an idea of how it works. As with all of these probing cycles, the instructions are really simple. In this case, all I have to do is put the tip of the stylus in the ring gauge and press cycle start. And you'll see here it's going to run across and hit four points, and it's going to calculate not only the X and Y location of the ring gauge, but also the internal diameter.